The Open Government Partnership, or OGP, has a simple but powerful goal, that governments should truly serve and empower their citizens. OGP's vision is that governments become more transparent, more accountable, and more responsive to their own citizens, improving the quality of governance and services that citizens receive. OGP was formally launched on September 20, 2011, the margins of the UN General Assembly, when eight founding governments, including Indonesia and the Philippines from Asia, as well as nine civil society organizations, endorsed the Open Government Declaration and announced their country action plans. Since 2011, OGP has grown to a partnership of 78 countries, a growing number of local governments, thousands of civil society organizations who come together to address the most pressing governance challenges faced by their respective countries. So OGP brings together domestic champions of reform in government and civil society who recognize that governments are much more likely to be effective and credible if they open their doors to public input and oversight and collaborate with stakeholders outside government. In the next slide, you'll see how OGP works. OGP signed off at the head of state level, meaning you will have the political cover you need to work on your goals. Often, the political will is there, but the knowledge or know-how on how to go from policy to practice is missing. OGP creates that safe space for government and civil society to partner for progress. But at the core of OGP is the platform for domestic dialogue between government and civil society and sometimes the private sector to co-create a set of contextualized open government commitments that are locked down in two-year action plans. These are homegrown reforms and not top-down imposed. So the dialogue helps governments gain trust and buy-in for their reforms. And the high-level political backing gives the process momentum. And more often than not, it helps unblock challenges. What do I want to emphasize here? It's citizens at the heart of government, the heart of society. You provide opportunities for citizen input and oversight. Then you create more effective, efficient, and credible government. So I'd like to direct your attention to the rightmost part on the independent reporting mechanism. So the progress of each country, both on the delivery of the commitments and on the quality and depth of the collaboration is independently evaluated by the independent reporting mechanism or the IRM. By publicly sharing country progress and challenges, OGP provides credibility and visibility to the reforms. So what makes OGP different is this domestically owned process. We are not a standard setting body, but it's a domestically owned mechanism to provide each country a, the space to work with where they are while pushing for a race to the top. So if you notice, there is a section there where it's called eligibility. So prior to joining a country will have to check its eligibility scores. The core eligibility criteria are the four that you see. Budget transparency, access to information, asset disclosure, and citizen participation. If you check Malaysia's score, it's not yet at the rate where it should be, where it can be eligible. I think we can talk more about that. Maybe Kyril will talk more about that later on uh, and what can be done. But once you have those scores as eligible, then you go through what I just mentioned earlier. You, government and civil society, agree to co-create a time-bound action plan, a two-year action plan. And then throughout this process, where they, they co-implement or there is a division of OCSOs who would uh, provide oversight, monitor, etc. There is what we call the OGP participation participation and co-creation standards that needs to be followed. It allows uh, CSOs to be engaged through the process. So the standards that I talked about are to ensure that there are baseline practices for all OGB participating countries that relate to disseminating of information that's related to the process, 
uh, it also relates to spaces for dialogue and co-creation. Because once you become an OGP participating country, you're also expected to form a multi-stakeholder forum where it is chaired by government and co-chaired by civil society. So the MSF uh, serves as a permanent mechanism for ongoing consultations with civil society and ensures that there will always be opportunities for public input. This MSF, this multi-stakeholder forum, is selected transparently as well, and they report publicly to other CSO stakeholders. So what's the crux of it? Dialogue, action, monitoring. So the ambition is really to change the culture of government. And one thing that also draws a lot of participating countries is the international dimension to it. I mentioned that there are 78 countries. More often than not, these countries uh, are provided with peer learning, inspiration, and support from their peers. There's also peer pressure to do better because of what they see and what they learn from other countries and other CSOs even. OGV becomes a platform to turn these global conversations, even on SDGs, into domestic action through these action plans. Music